Remember yesterday we were talking about those two morons on the oh, local yeah. radio station, WNEW? Mm -hmm. uh, they had this contest uh, where they um, encouraged people to have sex in public places. Well, they're toast. It's over. They uh, apparently went way over the line when they encouraged a couple to have sex in St. Patrick's Cathedral and then broadcast these activities on their program. Uh, Opie and Anthony, out of here. Uh, the couple has been charged with obscenity and public lewdness. Uh, they're due back in court in October, accused of having uh, sex in the excited. church while worshipers observe the Feast of the Assumption. What a tasteful uh, experience this whole thing was. The radio show offered a prize for listeners to have sex in public places. When public outrage reached the boss's desk, the head of Viacom dropped the axe on the show. And the postscript is the Catholic League says the punishment fits the crime and it will now drop its complaint with the Federal Communications Commission. Much, I'm sure, to the relief of the uh, people who own the uh, WNEW radio. How many of you are here for the Open Tennis in Queens? How many of you are here for... Okay. How many of you are here for the Open Sex at St. Patrick's Cathedral? How many of you are... Don't ask if you don't want to hear the tough answers. And welcome to the Opie and Anthony program. Yes. That's welcome. right, kiddies. Happy anniversary. Three years ago today, we uh, ruined our careers. Right. We would never work again. Yeah, we're going to go down uh, memory lane a little bit today. Three I mean, we have years? Three years ago today, yeah. Jesus. Three years ago today, we did our Sex for Sam thing and got... Fired! Wow. I then had to take two years and three months off. Can't believe that was three years. Three years ago, man. Jesus. <laughs> it's kind of fun to look back a little bit because everyone said that we wouldn't work again. Well, it's fun now that we're working. Of course. It wasn't fun for a couple of years when we weren't working to listen to uh, that. <sighs> Wasn't that a bittersweet thing like that Letterman? All of a sudden you're, you're you know getting some type of recognition and people are acknowledging it. Like Letterman, and uh, but you're fired. <laughs> you know, you, it's kind of like, all right, yeah, we're getting some press on that one. <laughs> we sure yeah, are. but <laughs> what good will it do? None. Yeah, well, that stunk. That whole two-year period stunk. Here's another one. Which one was this? Hardball. Most people come to St. Patrick's Cathedral to pray. But last week, one couple allegedly came to the New York City landmark to have sex. Brian Florence and Loretta Harper were arrested for public lewdness after their carnal communion, a few feet from worshippers, was described live on the radio. Shock jocks Opie and Anthony had encouraged the couple to have sex at locations where producer was waiting to call in the play-by-play. The radio team, part of Infinity Broadcasting, is off the air, and their managers have been suspended. But religious organizations are demanding the station's license be revoked. This is outrageous. Not only does it involve obscenity in the most extreme form, uh. people having sex at 4 o'clock in the afternoon in St. Patrick's Cathedral on a holy day, but the nerve of these people to actually have it as a setup. For its part, the station says WNEW regrets the unfortunate incident that took place. We apologize to anyone who has been offended and have taken measures to ensure that it does not happen again. All right, maybe playing these clips isn't fun after all. Yeah. That was Ken Stevens' quote, that <laughs> awful, we're sorry if anyone was offended. Yeah. I don't even know if Good that one. was Ken Stevens. I don't know who that was. I think they even told him to shut his trap. I think that came from way, way, way up. And the backpedaling jerk-offs. <laughs> right. Oh, we, we apologize. Everything should be hunky-dory now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it shouldn't. No. We're fired. <laughs> Here's another one. The radio station that fired shock jocks Opie shock and shock. Anthony is still under investigation. The Federal mm -hmm. Communications Commission says it's being flooded with complaints regarding WNEW-FM. The station broadcast a couple allegedly having sex inside St. Patrick's Cathedral, and now the FCC is looking into whether to strip the station of its broadcast license. But experts say never before has a station lost its license based on an indecency complaint. Right now, WNEW is filling the slot once filled by Opie and Anthony seen here with a nationally syndicated talk show. Meanwhile, the couple involved in the alleged sex stunt is facing charges of public lewdness and obscenity. Oof. They should have done NEW a favor and pulled the license. It probably have more listeners than it does now <laughs> without a license. Yeah, that's one thing. Uh, 
The radio station we did this on has never, never come back. Just crashed and burned, and Good. that's it. It has not come back. It's still suffering three years later. Ratings in the toilet. Still has no audience. Good uh, move. Absolutely no audience whatsoever. They're doing like classic hip hop dance, oh, uh, yeah. Puerto Rican style. If you're a Hard. black person yeah. living in a white neighborhood, <laughs> that's their format. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> The guys, funny. oh, they're such good guys. They no. only ask people to have sex in St. Patrick's Cathedral. Anyway, well, you know. Everybody can make a mistake. Priests are doing it. Why not? <laughs> That's what I say. I'd make the hetero <laughs> joke, but I will not. Anyway, you know, those are the guys who had a little contest on their show. Mm -hmm. They wanted people to have sex in surprising places. And St. Patrick's, I found that rather a surprising place to have sex. They also had their listeners... Yes. Somebody wrote this copy and I didn't change it. Do it. Okay, that, let's not do it. it that way. Do it. Ask their do listeners to, to have class. relations in a Disney store. Oh, now I see, see that's now outline. That's that bothers me. Yeah, that, that bothers, bothers me more than the, than the church. church. That yeah. is blank there's, and goofy. There's, there's, <laughs> that is blank and goofy. Oh. And in the Cinderella oh. section. Oh. That's just wrong. Okay, you know what? Actually, I've changed my opinion. I don't believe these Do you know why that is <laughs> almost more disgusting than St. Patrick's? Not more disgusting than God's house, but close, because there are so many kids around. Yeah, exactly. And these guys love that idea, because they also had a couple do it, as we say, in F.A.O. Schwartz, in Tiffany's. Tiffany's I can, I can live with, but a, but a kid's Carnegie store, Hall. that's just not, you know, I just, no, you know, having, the wrong person. having a little kid, that is not cool. Yeah. yeah. That's not cool. I was in Toys R Us last night, and, and had, no had, that, been, sex. had that been going on, there'd have been, there'd have been trouble. Someone would have choked on a on a Winnie the Pooh doll because <laughs> I had taken him out. Not around Mike. Kids. They also had their listeners have sex at the Hard Rock Cafe, which I didn't actually find that surprising. No. And McDonald's. So just a little How mixed do you have sex. What's wrong, Jimmy? This is the fucking the worst dialogue I've ever heard in my life. It's horrendous. It's a national TV show. What, what show is that? that? This is Fox Good Day. Oh, Fox Good Day. It's local, I guess. Oh. This oh, was is a that a local uh, news show here in New York City? That is atrocious. There would have been trouble. Yeah, someone would have choked on a pool doll. <laughs> they, they try to portray it like uh, like there were children in plain view of people having sex. W weren't they in closets and like elevator mechanical rooms, things like that, that were in uh, FAO Schwartz? It wasn't like they were standing on top of kids' toys with children watching having sex. It was... It was in like little nooks and crannies and closets of some of these places. It wasn't like they made an announcement and made sure all the kids yeah, gathered. And gather around, children. We're going to show you something that you usually don't see at FAO Shorts. Ho, 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 ho. God, they tried so hard to make it something it wasn't, you know? Tried so hard to boost this up because the story, uh, the reality of it wouldn't have been that titillating, exciting, dangerous. Uh, reality is, yeah, they went into places like FAO Schwartz and, and the Disney store. But they were inside rooms, in closets, dressing rooms, things like that. That no kid is going to see them uh, having sex in. Ridiculous. Company Just like the church. It all. Just like the church. It wasn't in front of uh, people that were there to pray. It, they were in a, a vestibule. There was no one around. Uh, like the security guard was around. He came running into the scene, but. That was it, but they, they liked to pump it up and make it seem like it was more than it was. McDonald's. So just a little How do you have sex? sex at a McDonald's? My God. I don't know. I worked at Burger King. There are a lot of little crevices you can get yourself into. Oh, now, some people really only have the the uniform near, the, oh. near the, 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 the grease fryer is always a very You just smell to it and you stink. That's right. Then you can take your shirt off. That's and if you want to hear the That's tape, I don't know why you would, but if you want to, if you're missing open to ye, what are their names? Open Anthony. And Anthony. I've, I've screwed it so many times I can't All say right. it right now. You can actually hear the tape of the couple having sex at St. Patrick's on the internet and... No, you can't, no. you asshole! You actually can't. Again. <laughs> Again, wrong. That's what I, I Can think we get the fucking phone call? We have, I don't think we've Paul's ever re-aired it. Here's the... Yeah, let's get it. I don't know if I have it yet. We'll have it uh, We've got to show people because they, they talked about this like it was live sex being broadcast over our airwaves that day. That's how they describe it. Look, and you could download it off the internet <laughs> and hear the yourself. couple having sex at St. Patrick's. No, you can't because that it didn't happen. It, it, there was no audio. It just it, it, what actually got broadcast was nothing. It was probably the tamest thing we've ever had on the air. And I'm, I mean, with any dialogue of us talking about anything, there was nothing there. But it didn't make a good story. 
All right, we're waiting for that audio. Hopefully, we'll have it soon. Who's the that, internet? Who's the broad? Huh? Who's this broad? Who know? is that broad? I don't know. I don't think she does yeah. TV anymore. They're just terrible. <laughs> just completely uncompelling and uninteresting. We handed them one of the best stories, one of the best New York stories in recent memory. Well, except for the biggie, obviously. Um, and they they had nothing. They had nothing. Yeah. Having sex at St. Patrick's on the internet, and some people think that it's not real, that they really weren't, but when you listen to the tape, I think it's fairly clear that they were. The woman was found without any bottoms on. Oh. And the security guard walks oh. up, and the security guard is like, what is going on here? And the guy from their radio show is saying to him, it's okay, leave them alone, it's their right. Wow, you know, I think, uh, my opinion about this is that you don't need to be dirty to be fun. You can have fun. Ah, 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 no, no, I'm just dead serious. You can come up with another bit than that. That's all you had? You that's can, it. You hey, people. Yeah, hey. Because that's all we did on the radio four hours a day, don't five days a week. Dirty. Don't need was, to be dirty to be fun. was just having uh, couples have sex all over the place. That's all we did, you fucking asshole. And he, he never, no one ever said it was their right. To have so she's just blurting out bullshit, right. just blatant bullshit coming out of that mouth. And it turned out the security guard that found the couple that day had a very <laughs> shady past. He was uh, oh, he got thrown out of St. Pat's. He got fired. Uh, not many people know that. He, that he made a horrendous witness. He was so, stealing from the poor box. That's what I heard. Supposedly, yeah, he was stealing from the poor. That's box. what the papers and, reported when he got fired. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, so he got fired. They would have kept you on the air. Do you understand how fucking fast that would have been to play up? Oh. This is the guy who this is your witness? Yeah. Stop. Boy, did they screw up by yanking you guys. Chick name is Julia Barber. Oh, Julia Barber? I Kenny! Yeah? You're talking about, that was Julia Barber from L.A.? Yeah, she was on that show, Good Morning or whatever. Uh, okay, I, I think her L.A. show was canceled too, right? They were trying yeah. to bring her to New York. I know who she is. Yeah, yeah, and what, who she wanted to talk, she's talking about having sex on that extreme dating show at night. Oh, really? Well, she was uh, also the one they tried to team up with Regis before they found Kelly. And Regis, oh, really? Yeah, Regis couldn't handle her energy. Her energy is, like, completely ridiculous. All yeah. right. Well, she, uh, yeah, she's had a pretty much failed TV career, so. Yes. All right, thank you, Kenny. What does she have, like, a high energy? She's, like, really peppy? Really high energy. She's an older lady trying to still look hot and sexy oh, through really? TV. She's awful. <laughs> Absolutely awful. Here's another one. Another sex scandal in the Catholic Church tonight, but this one involves a radio stunt. Three people are under arrest for having sex in St. Patrick's Cathedral while radio fans listened in. <clears throat> Why would anyone want to do this? Well, Alita Lopez is live right now at St. Pat's to explain. The Let's get her live. Why would anyone want to do this? Let's do this. Why? Can't wait for the answer. Here it comes. Kaidi, Opie and Anthony, the duo from 102.7 WNEW, has long been known for their antics, most recently for having a Boyer bus filled with barely clad women <laughs> cruise around Times Square. Now, that got a lot of press from City Hall, but tonight's sex in public places stunt that got all the way here to this holy place may have gone too far. Now, police say 37-year-old Brian Florence and 35-year-old Loretta Lynn Harper, both of Virginia, were arrested for having sex on a vestibule outside St. Patrick's Cathedral during the live Opie and Anthony show this afternoon around 445. A security guard discovered the pair and 42-year-old Paul Mercurio of New York City who was working with the station and apparently was on a cell phone relaying the act on air. Tonight, the trio are at Midtown North Precinct and the couple is charged with obscenity in the third degree. Paul Mercurio for acting in concert. Now, the incident today was part of the radio show's Sex for Sam contest seen here on this website. It challenged people to have sex in public places Thursday, August 15th, today, with the spotter from the show tagging along. Now, couples will accumulate points for where and who was involved in these acts. The couple with the most points, the prize, was a trip to Boston. Well, she described it accurately. All right. <laughs> She's exactly really what the says was. Right. <laughs> she got all the facts. It was Paul. It wasn't someone from the show. It was the, that was it was a in great the description. Mule. It wasn't it, in the actual church. It Very was relayed. Good. The message was relayed from him over the air, not the couple. You <laughs> wow. couldn't hear them. Wow. Perfect.
to Boston. Now again, tonight the trio is in the Midtown North Precinct and is expected to be arraigned tomorrow morning. Now police also tell us that Florence, the man, the couple, the man from the couple caught in the act was also taken to St. Clair's Hospital to get prescribed medication for of all things a back pain. Now no comment tonight from St. Patrick's Cathedral or the radio station. We're live tonight at St. Patrick's Cathedral. I'm Lolita Lopez for the WB11 News at 10. Peter, back to you. All right, Lolita. The prize was a trip to Boston. Go figure. Oh, wow. Hey, hey shut figure. up. What's that guy getting at? <laughs> <laughs> go figure. WB11, the only one that got it right so far. Yeah. Well, that's just, wow. That's a, just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there were so many news reports and commentary and... Yeah. You know. Oh, it just went on and on. And people just discussing <laughs> our lives... Whether we should work, whether we will work again, we're done in the business. I like those guys. We've gotten those after each of our firings. <laughs> the guys that get on and just say, well, it's over for them. That's it. You'll never see them again. They're they're done. They're going to have to uh, find another career. They're done. Oh, oh well, we're back. <laughs> we're back again. We Thanks, come XM. back. Satellite radio. That's spreading it. the virus once again. Slowly but surely rebuilding our radio careers, getting more gooder every day. More gooder. Remember we thought we might be arrested? That night the phone was still, Billy Mack was still going, look, they, they might arrest you guys, they might not. And of course oh, Ben yeah. was fueling all that with his, Ben was, you know, it was like, you know, don't, 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 they might come out and arrest everybody. He has had no facts at all. Don't, don't. Fucking <laughs> okay, best horrifying everyone. That little phone. <laughs> <laughs> that is little phone. <laughs> uh, let's say hi to Jerry. Jerry, what's up? Hey, Ope, how you doing? Pretty good, Jerry. Good. I wanted to remind, uh, I guess, the new listeners or, or you guys that the um, the guy was taken out, the guy who had sex in, in the church was taken out a couple of years or maybe a year ago, two years ago, by a heart attack. Yeah, the guy that was um, in in that contest and arrested, he ended up dying of a heart attack. That's a, that I guess is a fact. Florence, I, can't, I can't remember his first name. Brian. I don't really know the Brian, details, yeah. but I've, I I heard that he had a, uh, a rough life uh, in general. Yeah. So yeah, something tells me he wasn't going to the hospital for back medication. I think it was like yeah. methadone or something. I know some uh, f I know some facts about uh, that, but uh, we'll just let it be. But uh, he ended up passing from a heart attack. And boy, the city raked those two through the coals. I mean, they the way they handled it, the city just they, for over a oh, year yeah. they dragged it out because yeah. they really couldn't get them on much. So they just no. they just really made them come up from Virginia about eight ten uh, they times. They just wanted to make their lives a living hell because they had nothing on the couple. Um, they were found innocent. For the most part, right? They had a little community service, but they were found innocent of the major uh, charges. And, uh, yeah, the fact is they knew that, so they were like, well, let's just make them come up here for a year, back and forth, you know, taking time off from work and everything else. That yep. girl's name was uh, Jillian Barbary was her name. Yeah. The guy was saying Julia oh, okay. Barber yeah. or something. Uh, and uh, I knew what I'm, he was talking about. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, she's a little dirty hey, girl. Hey, hey, uh, why? I'm looking at uh, pictures of her... She's in like bra and panties, bikinis. Yeah, she tries. She got to... like a huge camel toe. No. Yeah, yeah she look. tries to dress really sexy. Look at her. Oh, she doesn't look like that anymore, bro. Look at her huge camel toe there, Jimmy. You like that? Mm. Yeah, she doesn't look like that anymore. No, because there's plenty of pictures of her up there. She's nice. See? Oof. She's definitely hot. Looks I mean, like she has Leno's, really Leno's chin in her panties. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like a split toe, it was like one of those just yeah. big fat ones. Which could be like, you know, just big meat, or it could be a toboggan. Whatever it is. I want to go... <laughs> Meaty. Uh, Barbary was in Playboy. Barbary oh, yeah? is a big Hollywood whore. She Rob is? in Boston. What's up, Rob? Hey, what's up? Hey, hello, Jimmy. Hey, hey um, the, you know that Julian Barbary chick you guys were talking about? Yeah. You know, I was like, sail you down the river. Uh, apparently, uh, she's like fucked like everybody in Hollywood trying to like further her career and still has gotten nowhere. She's like a huge slut, like at parties and shit. She'll uh, she'll come up and like go leave with one guy, come back and pick up some other like C D E list star. Nice. And she's just trying to sweep her way through Hollywood and still getting nowhere. Really? Exactly. All right. Well, hey, you're punching out, guys. And this guy Ellis from Philly. Uh, Ellis, what's up? Hey, uh, Dave, Jillian Barbary. She was the uh, weather girl on the uh, Fox football shows on uh, Sunday afternoons, and also she was recently married to Ryan Seacrest. Speck and the attack? Oh, again. <laughs> oh, again. <laughs> All right, Alice. Thank you. I must have nailed him with that one <laughs> a year ago. 
Well, I'm in stall mode because we want to play the uh, actual phone call. The actual phone call. But it's so filthy, right, that we have to edit it? Is that why? No. No? I figured it was so filthy with all the talk of sex, explicit sex. Hmm. Well, it is the anniversary of the Sex for Sam thing. Yeah. And I actually had to come in here at 6 and tell everyone that we might want to play clips from this. I had no idea that it was even oh my God. the anniversary. Hey, it's been documented. I don't remember anniversaries very well. <laughs> I understand that. That's a big day. Yeah. I mean, some of the uh, radio uh, message, uh, radio board sites are basically <laughs> saying uh, our little stunt started uh, changing radio, as everyone knows it. You see this little uh, blurb? What paper was this in? Daily News. Daily News. Morning co-host Goomba Johnny of WKTU. Here in New York, noting the sex scandal with the St. Patrick's uh, priest, joked that, quote, he should be ashamed of himself. Uh, himself. He stole the idea from Opie and Anthony. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, Goomba Johnny. Goomba Johnny's always been like a friend of the show. Yeah, yeah. he's what you program. call a good egg. Right. Kind of strange because he's doing a morning show as we do a morning show. Yeah. How does that work? I don't yeah, get that. Plenty of room. Because he does like a very, he's kind of happy and fun on the air, and yet you know he'd be happy to break your thumbs with his teeth. <laughs> like a fucking animal. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> he's a psychopath. Well, Eric's getting some of the uh, clips from um, the famous Sex for Sam show. Anthony, for the first time in yeah. three years, we get to replay this. <sighs> this is the actual phone call. All right, this is the phone call. We got it. This is it right here. Here it is. Now, you might have heard the newscasters saying that. By the way, if you're just tuning sex. in, I got to let everyone know. It was three years ago today we did Sex for Sam and blew up mm -hmm. our careers. It was a huge day yeah. in the careers of this, uh, this fine radio program. Would have been one of those real big parts of our timeline where they would have had to have a picture and a big paragraph of what happened. Wow. Very important day. And uh, this is a, you might have heard the newscasters talking about the broadcast, the actual broadcast, what went out over the air. And some of them said it was a description of pew-rocking sex at St. Pat's, uh, live sex on the air from St. Pat's, a graphic description of a couple having sex at St. Pat's. Well, all that is uh, bullshit. Because the fact of the matter is, there was nothing graphic. Nothing that couldn't be said today over regular radio airwaves. And uh, I guess we have it here. All right, let's go to Paul and the Juicy Lips before we take a break. His team is representing D.C. today, Marshall and Lynn. What's up, uh, Paul? We're in St. Pat's, and he's doing the balloon knot inside, and the security guy is coming up to us right now. There you go. That was it. That was it, ladies and gentlemen. Hold, hold on. You could, you could let the kids out of the room now. <laughs> you could let them out of their bedroom, back in the living room, to listen in with you once again, because that whole graphic description of sex is uh, over. That was it. That was it. It was reported so much differently. How many of these motherfuckers got on the air and said it was pure rocking sex? Described live on the airwaves of the Opie and Anthony show. Just a few feet from where people were praying. People were praying. That was it. There was nothing more. That was the live description of sex that was carried on our airwaves. Got to hear it again. This is the reason we had to take two years and three months off. Here it is. All right, let's go to Paul and the Juicy Lips before we take a break. His team is representing D.C. today, Marshall and Lynn. What's up, uh, Paul? We're in St. Pat's, and he's doing the balloon knot inside, and the security guy is coming up to us right now. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, all right. Hey, come on, let him go. They're okay there. No, let him go. We were just looking for the restroom. That's Are you all. Really? The restroom. No, no, no. I need to get the restroom. What's the problem? Come to the south side, please. I just oh, need the restroom. Like no, they were, just, they were just looking for the restroom. I thought the door was open. I'm talking to them. Oh, I can talk to them. Yeah. Really? Come to the south side. All right, listen, we'll, uh, we'll just split. All right, we'll go. We'll we'll right go. Right Who's coming right in? I can't even use the restroom. Listen. You just need to use the restroom. Don't be such. What are you being so difficult for? Oh my God! So he would never. This is a sacrilegious place. He would never do anything like that. This is the Catholic Church. Hey, listen. You, you want to be arrested? You don't be quiet. All right? No, I'm not going to be quiet. I have a right to say whatever I want. 
See. That's what ended it all. See. <laughs> In that situation, leave. Paul and the couple should have just walked away. Just walk away. But that that anti-Catholic stuff or whatever, which I know he was only saying in the moment. I mean, I don't I don't think he's anti-Catholic. He was just saying it in in the spirit yeah. of what was going on. But that was what they grabbed onto, and they'll never say it because it's not illegal. But mm -hmm. that is what I guarantee you they grabbed onto, and they said we are really going to hurt these people for this. But and, where was the sex? And it sounded like he was going to talk his way out of it. It's like they were just using the bathroom. We'll leave. <clears throat> we'll leave. And at that point, he should have left, and we, I think leave. we would have been all right. Where's the pure rocking sex? Yeah, where is it? Where's the sex? Oh, ba they all reported that there was a description of sex. We gave a graphic description of uh, the sex at St. Pat's. <laughs> Nothing. How much they bullshit the news. I'm a big fan of getting reporters on the air. I mean, uh, I think we should try to get some. I mean, I don't know if we can do it today, but why not call them out? They're never called out on their bullshit. Why did you s play the clip of what they said and then play this? Why did you say that if you hadn't heard the tape? Chuck from Pittsburgh, if Paul would have kept his smart mouth closed when the security guy came over, you never would have gotten into hot water. He was a smart aleck. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck is calling him a smart aleck. All right, let's continue here. Hey, listen, you, you want to say I read this? You, you'll be quiet, all right? No, I'm not going to be quiet. I have a right to say whatever I want to say. Just because you have a blue jacket on with a patch on doesn't mean you have authority over me. You know that when they give you the walkie-talkie, that doesn't mean to take away my constitutional rights. We're going to go, all right? We can do whatever we want. We walked out. Every, no harm, no foul. Not a problem with priests due to kids, though, is it? Yeah, oh. Hey. Oh. That was it. Hello. <laughs> sealed our fate right there. But again, in that, no, there's one more line. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that sealed the fate. But again, that was just in, in the moment. And I, you know, as much as, you know, he and I haven't really hit it off since then, I can't blame. I know what he was doing in the moment. Mm. It's like a roller coaster, though. It's like, all right, he's going to get out of this. Uh-oh, 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 shut your mouth. And then, once again, he's like, all right, we'll get out of here. But then he has to, like, give him a parting shot. Yeah. This is like watching the end of Cuckoo's Nest for me. I can't watch the end of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest because I always say to Nicholson and Chief, when the window is open and Billy kills himself in the other room, uh, just go! Just leave. The window is open. Go, leave. Randall. Go. This is exactly how I feel. Yeah. Just walk out. But you know it always ends the same way. <laughs> There's a scream and he has to run in and try to choke Ratchet. I got a confession to make. What, Opie? This is the first time I'm hearing this audio since we did, uh, yeah. did the show. I couldn't listen to this. I think I've heard it once during uh, on a computer somewhere during the uh, break. In the past three years, I saw it there on websites. All I had to do was click. It's a graphic argument click. with security. There's no sex, though. All I had to do was click, but I just I just couldn't do it for the last three years. No. Wow. Well, <laughs> not a problem with priests due to kids, though, is it? Yeah, that's what <laughs> I guess when the doors are closed, it happens on the altar, right? That's what happens. But yeah, it's nothing like, nothing like meat and potato sex to turn that church around, right? It's all a heterosexual sex. Do you see everybody out here? I'm a scumbag? Yeah. With the cop yeah. that says done to yeah. kids for 35 yeah. years? Yeah. How could you be part of that? Yeah. You're culpable. Yeah. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> They're meat and potato sex yeah. is what the church needs. Step up! Be counted! And that was a balloon knot, just so you knew. <laughs> balloon knot. Where's your dog now? <laughs> Oof, oh, boy. And we're just laughing like idiots. Yeah. I knew we were fired. We were just <laughs> laughing like idiots. There were tears through that laughter. Was there? Yeah. Me too. I knew it was over, Johnny. Where's your God now? That's one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's what a, that's what a 50-year-old police captain will hear and really get upset. And just yeah. in case you're wondering, it was the balloon knot. Oh, boy. Ouch. <laughs> All right, we're moving on. We'll call you back. All right. Wow. Oh, oh, my God. 27 <laughs> points. 25 points. A two-point conversion. It should be and eternal damnation. We should be uh, allowed to just give him 200 extra points. Oh, my God. The guy has <laughs> a sack that is too huge for to worry. Believe. You cannot. How the hell... Did you hear him? Yeah, we'll just let that sit. And you can see yeah. how at least we knew something was wrong, so the radio show condemned it immediately. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> let me give the point count. We really were fucking Eddie Egger. <laughs> <laughs> we do oh, just... Oh, man. <laughs> that was terrible. It's doing math instead of going... Oh, oh let's <laughs> see. 25, two-point conversion. Yeah, 27 points. Let's keep the game going. I just want to give them the title at that moment. 
Not even thinking. Ben was Ben before the show. I gotta say, Ben knew it, and I remember him saying it. Yeah. Yes, I do. But he said, uh, "Shouldn't be don't on the list." Do it. Do not do ah, it. Don't. Dude, don't no. do it. Don't. Dude, I'm telling you, dude. Don't. And he was right. He was and right. Hasn't been since. No, it was the last good decision <laughs> Ben almost made. <laughs> All right, let's go to Joe on uh, Whack Bag. Joe. Hey, how's it going, man? Hey, hey man. How's it going? Over uh, happy birthday, little Jimmy. Thanks. Um, yeah, I was just calling in. Uh, I remember the, the last day you guys were actually on the air. I think it was uh, the following Monday. I remember uh, it might have been what you guys signed off with. I hope you said something like, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, we think everything's going to be okay, guys. Uh yeah, it was a rough weekend, but everything's going to be all right. And then I went and I turned on the radio the next day, and it was Cousin Ed playing the best rock in Philly. Oof. Yikes. Well, we, he couldn't have said worse weekend. I believe it happened on a Thursday, and our last live broadcast was on a Friday. They actually let us on the air the next day, which is just amazing. Yeah, we had Brian Regan on. We had Brian yeah. Regan on, and we couldn't even uh, refer to the event. Don't mention it. And that's, by the way, that's why I, I don't hate Donahue like I, I thought I would. I'm much more fault the company for just handling it so horribly and not just seeing what would happen, just panicking like they do in all of radio and just backing out immediately. They're just like cowards. Yeah. Yeah, I think you guys were on uh, for like two more broadcasts. It was no, like one. Friday and no, a Monday. No, trust me, we know. Best of, <laughs> we, <laughs> we know. Yeah, know. Dude, it was best of for a week. <laughs> yeah. Or till the, till the following Thursday, and then it went uh, off. Uh, okay. All right, guys. Have a good day. <clears throat> Thanks. Right. So then uh, that's what uh, happened. And then, of course, uh, we come back from commercials, and oh, we yeah, have okay. to get Paul back on the air. We got to go, go back uh, uh, to the juicy lips. Yes, Paul. <laughs> Paul. Yeah, just, uh, the cop just came in. He, he walked. He said, if we go back in, he's going to arrest us. Oh. They called the cops. And I told him, you know, we weren't doing anything. We were just, uh, you know, uh, you know, observing uh, the, uh, what is it, the Sabbath? I don't know, whatever. <laughs> All right. And they say, you know, you go back in, you got to recall it. All right. Now he's coming back to play. Hey, Paul, can you can you go back in and get your uh, your uh, poor box money back? <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he, I think he was kind of standing there, like, just kind of enjoying the moment instead of just hopping into a cab and am uh, Beat it. And for years I was pissed that he didn't get out of there, but uh, I'm still. They were, angry. they were gonna. They were gonna. No, I'm still angry on many levels, but they were gonna find this couple no matter what. They would have found them, dude. But an actual arrest there, I think, made it so much more. Yeah. To have to have them come in and go to Virginia, for, it, it just, it just would have been diluted a little bit. They could have scrammed. You got to understand. After Paul did what he did, yeah, everyone's on their walkie-talkies. The NYPD has been uh, called, and they're now. On their way to St. Pat's Cathedral. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. So they they should have uh, got out of there. But just they hope for the best, but they were just kind of <laughs> hanging around. And uh, one of the funniest things is how Paul wasn't getting arrested through this whole thing. And nope. he, he couldn't understand why he wasn't getting arrested. He was, yeah. I, ha I hate to say it, but he was looking for a lot of attention that day himself. Hate to say it. That's, I've been saying that for three years. That was what my problem with him was. Not that he went into the... And I've told him this. I mean, it wasn't... That he went into the church. It wasn't that he went over the top because, again, I understood what he was doing. It was the fact that when I started coming on your show and things started going good for me as a comedian, you start selling tickets and other guys see that and go, wow, this is great. And the voyeur bus for me, that arrest was a huge moment on Opie and Anthony. Yeah. Well, then you have this opportunity where you see like this is a moment. You know, sometimes you can sense this is a moment. What am I going to do with it? And yeah. This is that that was went into play, and he would never admit that. But I don't care. That went into play. I think. Yeah. It was that desire to all of a sudden hit that home run and go? Wow, you know, now I'm a major part of the show. Yeah, he was thinking this would uh, blow him up. Great press. Right. He would blow way up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are okay? Uh, yeah. You guys are all right? Yeah, we're cool. It was uh, it was uh, it was a little dicey, but we're cool. Uh, they're really cool, man. They blew me away. I thought I had like. I thought I had the dead one. They're, they're insane. All right. All right. I'll call in a minute. I got something else going on. I'll call All right, in a minute. Thank you. There go the juicy lips. It looks like they're going to be okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. so weird to hear sure. this. Way to read like it. Like I said, I haven't heard this in three yeah, years. Way to read it. <laughs> yeah, still, we're not reading it. Okay, good. They're going to yeah, be all right. Yeah, nah, everything's right. fine. Looks great. Right, maybe we'll get a little mention in uh, David Hinckley's uh, tiny little radio oh. column, you know. That eh, looks fine. I think the cops put their hat on them, and they're eating an ice cream cone <laughs> down at the station. Everything's fine. <laughs> Sitting on the hood of the car. <laughs> <laughs> what dopes we are. Ah, yeah. oh, it looks like it's just going to be fine, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and then Paul called back. 
Right before commercials, we had Paul Mercurio. Uh, now here we are exploiting it. Yeah. Like I said, I haven't heard music. any of this in three years. I, I had no idea we started playing cops. We stink. The cops theme. Right before commercials, we had Paul Mercurio in um, St. Patrick's Cathedral, Anthony. The, yeah. The St. Patrick's Cathedral. And a yeah. uh, couple allegedly did the two-point conversion. The two-pointer. Um, and there's a little altercation between Paul and the guard that was in there. Uh, there were some words. And Paul's got a big set of brass balls because he doesn't back down. He, and now I'm uh, getting reports of police. Paul. Paulie. Yeah, you listen, officer. I don't understand. If you're going to take us down to the station, then take us down and do the investigation. But we're standing here and you have nothing. You're taking one person's oh. opinion. Yeah, I have my money card that has my name on it and uh, a credit card and a money card. I don't have a picture ID. I think okay. I am ready to okay. that big well up. And I have to urinate all the time. He's talking to six cops right now. They want to take all three to the station. Yeah, at this point now they got six oh, cops, more oh. on the way. <clears throat> there was plenty of time to leave. They just yep. converged on the scene. And then Paul's asking to be taken down. To the station house. Because the cop, according to the call, the cop originally said, if you go back in there, I'm going to arrest you. If he yeah. would have just said, no, oh, no, no, we're, 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 there was nothing. They had to pee and whatever. And just yeah, just be cab. cool about it and go, there, yeah, whatever. Jump into a cab. The cops aren't going to chase a cab. What happened? That, it was a couple of they left. You know, they, yeah. they, they don't want to deal with that shit. Hell no. If I pulled up Paul and the team, you would see that I'm swollen. I have to do it. We went in there to try and find a restroom. The place that we went up into, I thought that that was a restroom. What is, what is he saying that he saw? What is the security guy saying he saw? I've had a TV. It's really hard to hear. I can hear it. He's a friend of mine. You can feel my TV. I'm taking him around the city. I'm giving him a tour of the city. We took him into the church, and, you know, what are they doing in the church is their business. And this guy, he comes up from behind them, and he gets on the walkie-talkie, and suddenly, you know, suddenly, you know, he's a lone ranger, and he calls in the city, he calls in the cavalry, and you guys show up, and there's five guys in a squad car. And if you're going to take us to the station, take us to the station. If you're going to arrest us, arrest us, and let's get it over with. Uh, but I don't know what the basis is for the arrest. You can't. Uh, I said to him, you were trying to get arrested, and he said, no, I wasn't. I was trying to do compelling radio. That is trying to get arrested. Yeah. I, I, I know, because I have this weird grasp of English language, and when somebody says, arrest us, that yeah. means you want to get arrested. Yeah, you can't, you can't challenge the cops to no. arrest you. The basis is for the arrest, and I don't think you guys know either, otherwise you'd be arrested by now. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> All I wonder, I'm not trying to be a, I'm not to be a spot ass, but, you know, tell, bring him over, and if he wants to talk about this, look me in the eye and let him tell me what he thinks he saw. But if you're conducting an investigation and you're about to arrest the three of us, don't you think you should talk to us? Well, it's like, I think it's going, I, honestly, no do I, I disrespect. I think it's going in one ear and out the other. And you've already made your decision. So let's get in the car, it's air conditioned, and let's go. You're entitled to your event. Yeah, I, you know what? Frankly, I am. Oh, I want to wander around. Yeah. Well, I haven't made that determination. They haven't decided. Well, I just think, why don't you stop getting yourself all excited to take my advice? Take a breath. The telephone calm down. So I can do my job. Well, this is 15 minutes of nonsense. And we, we left the church when we were told to leave. We walked down the sidewalk. He called that gentleman, and that gentleman came tearing down the sidewalk for us. So it's like you guys are looking to do something with us. We left when we were told to leave. Three guys escorted us out. On top of it, it's the Catholic Church. How can they be loyal about sex? Oh. Think about that for a minute. That's yeah. what he was saying. What? He should just, oh, he should have just shut his mouth. Oh, my God. He's Now he's bringing up the fact that it's the Catholic Church to the cop. and They can't be moral about sex. Yeah. Just, don't try to explain it to him. Just be courteous, understanding with the cops. Talk to them nicely, and he, they would have let you leave. That's what, what happened. Oh, it is painful to listen to. 
church. How can they be loyal about the sex? Think about God for a minute. That's what he was saying. He was saying that we were having, they were having sex in there to us. To our face. So that's not what you said. I'm trying to get your side of the story. I'm talking the story. These people are in there looking at the church. He had to go to the bathroom. He's saying that they were having sex. That's ridiculous. There's a show going on outside St. Patrick's Cathedral right now. Should we uh, put him on hold for a second, Andrew? So, is that right if we just go? No, now? no, I kind of want to hear that. Okay, okay. I don't understand what the basis is for detaining us then. Someone would like to tell me that, that'd be great. Anytime today. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. Now you see why nothing gets done. All right. Five guys standing around trying to figure out what the charge is for. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, hold on. Hold on. We're doomed. We're doomed. All right, hold on. Oh, my God. We're back live here. We're yeah. listening to the tape of uh, three years ago. Sex for Sam. It's the anniversary today. And you remember how you asked one time, how did I get to go on Infinity Stations and plug gigs? Yeah. Because the guys that listened to the tape really weren't familiar with the show. Yeah. So they heard this whole thing, and I hadn't said, they didn't hear my voice. That yeah. was probably how they allowed it. Because Not a peep out of little Jimmy. Yeah, were you in that day? Oh, certainly was. <laughs> I, I haven't heard you yet. I'll tell you why. I did a Cleveland uh, a gig for the Cleveland Browns with Bob Kelly the night before. Yeah. It was me, Bob Kelly, and LL Cool J. And I flew home that morning. I was on no sleep. I was exhausted because uh, I was coming right off a flight into Lucky the studio. Lucky you. Yeah. You didn't say a word. It's like he knew. No, I didn't. It's like Jimmy knew this was going to happen and let us hang out to dry. Not at all. So now it's a complete mess outside St. Pat's Cathedral, and Paul's pretty much wondering why they're being uh, held. Mm -hmm. and uh, Begging to be arrested. Begging to be arrested. I believe he had to take his own uh, cab down to the police station because they didn't arrest him. He did. They didn't arrest him. He had, to, he finally, had to drive himself to the station. He drove himself to the station. Well, he had a cab get him to the station, and then finally the police were like, all right, dude, Jesus. Yeah, and they right. arrested him down it's there. It's the first time someone ever said to a cabbie, follow that car, and it was a police car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> all right, we have a little more here. Here, let's uh, go back to Paul. The Juicy Lips. Outside St. Patrick's Cathedral. This guy. Oh, yeah. Can you hear us? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? So now uh, I gotta just be careful because I, I just they haven't told me to take my uh, take my earphone out or anything. I don't want them to know that I'm on the air. But they're just like five cops are standing around like debating this at this point. But they they kicked us out and then they came they came tearing down the sidewalk and they put us against the wall. The front of the car, they put our hands against the wall and that whole nonsense and patted us down and everything. And now they, they, they brought a sergeant in, uh -oh. and now another guy's showing up in another car. Oh, uh, you're done. And they're, they're, so they're done. like uh, the security guy from the church. Yeah. You know. He don't and, have... And by the way, the guy I'm with, the yeah. guy the guy of the couple is on probation. <laughs> and he's freaking out. <laughs> And he's like, oh, I should, I'll tell him, I'll tell him we did it, and then it was just say it's a radio prank. I'm like, no, if you admit it, this, no, no. Yeah. He's about to, he's about to collapse. I like you. All the sex and the heat and this, I think he's going to have a stroke. I like your oh, take on the whole thing. There's nothing, the guards saw nothing, and there's no crime. Yeah, no, exactly. And I, I, I think we'll be, I think we'll be okay, because if, if he was going to do something right now, he probably would have. But yeah. Uh, we'll Evan, yeah. Evan uh, is saying, Paul, just show them your Emmy. <laughs> all, right, hold, all, right. all right, hold on. Oh, yeah, good call. Yeah, everything will be fine. Legal yeah. eagles. Yeah, no, I see. No crime has been committed. That's right. They'll let you go. There's sergeants pulling up. Did you know at that point? I started feeling a little like, uh-oh, they're going to get arrested. It's kind of weird to listen to this for the first time in three years because I swear after we hung up with him the first time, I was thinking we're done. Yeah, but no, obviously not. I know, because it sounds a lot different what uh, what we're hearing now. It's you know what it is. It's that that fine I think line. I, was, I think I had just adrenaline and energy. Yeah. After that, so I think I, I was just kind of going with the radio show there's, still, but inside, deep inside, I'm like, oh man, we are so screwed. There's a fine line in radio, in in talk radio. It's you you kind of know that you're going to get in trouble, but the moment is so good for radio, for what you're doing, that you stay in it. And you want to milk it for all it's worth, you know, because you're thinking, hey, this will get press. You know, uh, you're not thinking you're going to get fired. I think I knew we were going to get press about it, uh, especially if they got arrested. 
um, and we'd probably catch some flack, but I thought they supported us enough where they wouldn't fire us. But you got to remember the environment of radio too when this went down three years ago. Yeah. You know, a show like ours being syndicated to close to 20 cities across America with huge ratings and all the demos we needed to have huge ratings in, mm. making millions and millions of dollars for the company, you just didn't fire a show for that. No, no. For I anything. You'd somehow figure out, you know, how to get through it. They yeah. fired us. It was the first time that, you know, a show with uh, a lot of ratings was fired in that way. Yep. And then after this uh, broadcast and after our firing, you know, radio definitely changed a bit. And they started firing people for doing things that was a lot less worse than this. And there's actually now people think this radio show has gotten soft and changed, but uh, to, we're having this big contest today. That like, but there's no sex. You have to go to like places in New York wearing an Opie and Anthony hat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now now it would get into big trouble. You get a picture with your thumbs up somewhere, maybe with a Hard Rock. <laughs> Let's say hi to Alan. Alan, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Hey, Alan. Hey, man. Hey, I hate to backtrack, but what is a balloon knot? Ah, the balloon knot. That's a term we used to have to use on the air because you couldn't say what it was. Uh, let me see if I could uh, have you guess what it is. I yeah. don't think I could do it. All right, well, uh, let me help you out. Yeah, you, you ever blow up a balloon? Yeah. And then you tie the end in a knot? Mm-hmm. Now, l- look at the part that you just blew into. What does that look like? <laughs> that helped. <laughs> that helped. We're Did, a little slow out here in West Texas. That's all right. Sheep have that too. Uh, yes. Yeah. So you, now, boys. You're a new listener to the show, Alan, huh? Yes, sir. So you had no idea about this thing. No. That's kind of yeah. weird. All right. Trying to spread the virus here in Odessa. Uh, we appreciate Thank it, you, sir. Okay. All right. Thank yes. You. The balloon knot is, of course, the asshole. <laughs> the actual hole part of it. <laughs> Let's go to Frankie. Frankie, like what's up? Tied up balloon. Frankie. Hey, Frankie. Frankie. Yo, what's up, guys? What's Steve? up, Frankie? Nothing. I just listening to the show now. Uh, about a year ago on Wackbed, there was a some sort of email from Opie saying that you said something to the effect of "we're fucked" before the show went on the air. Mm. No, what? Mm. Not conspiracy stuff. No, it's not a conspiracy. Uh, it was a, l- a letter I wrote when. Uh, about a- this took. This letter came out after the show got after you guys got fired. Oh, I guess you were recapping on on uh, the message board and said that you said something about we're fucked at the beginning of the show. Yeah, because because uh, oh, okay. the church yeah, yeah, being yeah. on the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the well, the following day, yeah. Oh, that all happened the following day. I believe so. <laughs> well, you, we went on the air the next day, and I said something like. Uh, I guess what happened during our intro music or something? You could hear me in the background going, "We're effed." Yeah, uh-huh. or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I forget now because I haven't I haven't heard the this uh, this audio in a long time now. But uh, yeah, something like that in, in the background. You could hear me going, "Oh, we're effed." Something like that. Uh, all right, thanks a lot. All right, bro. Bye bye. Bye. Here's another call from Paul. Let's go back to Paul. Hey, listen, I'm gonna go with them. Can I go down with them to the? Can I go with them? Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is you know. Now they're arresting the couple, and there's Paul pleading with the cop to uh, be allowed to go with them. He is trying his best to be arrested. Because he cares so much about the couple. <laughs> Can I go with them? And the cop says, take a cab. Can you hear that in the background? The yeah. cop says, take a cab. Take, take a, a cab. cab. Well, that sounds like the cop's really trying to arrest you. <laughs> take a cab and make sure you do. <laughs> Let's go back to Paul. Hey, listen, I'm going to go with them. Can I go down with them? To the... Can I go yeah, with them? Take a cab. No, can I go in the car with them? Well, if you're going to arrest them, arrest me then. What's the difference? I don't care. This is ridiculous. You don't want to take me because they're afraid to say anything, and you know that you guys are wrong. Go ahead. Take me. I don't care. This is ridiculous. You guys got to have something better to do than this. Look at me. I'm 5'8", soaking wet. I'm 150 pounds. I can't do anything. And you're, like, getting all tough. This is ridiculous. Oh, man. He's trying. Officer. Officer, can I talk to you for a minute? This guy won't even talk to me now. What happened, Paul? They took them in handcuffs and put them in a car. They're taking them to Midtown North. Oh, no. Our... <laughs> oh, one of our teams is arrested. Can I go down with them at least in the car? Can I go in the car with them? Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to go down. I'm going to take a cab over there to the street and Why? Go down there with them. All right, Paul. All right. Okay. Uh, oh, boy. 
Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> well, that's the first time one of our teams have, have ever been arrested. Well, someone send uh, someone down there to uh, get them out of jail. <laughs> you can hear in our voices uh, now. Right there, it was like... Our voices uh, finally dropped. The adrenaline oh, is... Oh, uh, we're fucked. It's going another way now, and you could tell. That was my this biggest complaint. This is just going to get ugly. Right mm. there. Arrest me. He, it, it, Boy, if that isn't a guy really trying hard to be arrested... Not that it wouldn't have been bad... And otherwise, but that was the direct tie into the show because then uh -huh. they kept saying the producer was arrested with them. It just. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow, that was brutal. When we got arrested on the Voyeur bus, you know what I did when the cops came on the bus? I shut my fucking mouth. That's what you do. Because it was a real event. It was like everybody shut up. Psycho Mark called from the. Uh, the back of the paddy wagon, he called you guys. I'm like, just fucking hang up, stupid. What are you doing? Fuck the show. We're going to jail. I remember that, Jimmy. You took your pinch like a man. You kept your mouth shut and you didn't rest. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say hi to Brian. Brian, what's up? Hey, what's going on, boys? Hey. Um, like, real quick question. If you could go back and change this and, you know, get the last two years back and whatnot and not go to XM, would you do it? Or, you know, at the end of the day, was this actually worth it? It was, can I, I'm, I'm let those guys answer, but I got to say, the, for, it, it actually, t it, corny, but it's the best thing that ever happened, and I know it sounds cliche, but yeah. uh, first of all, they would have been fired anyway. I could speak for the boys. There's no way that this fucking radio show would have lasted in that climate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because especially after the Janet Jackson thing. Uh, yeah, oh, you guys would have been. We would have been fucked. I mean, jacket. I think yeah. it, at some point, we probably would have done something that would have gotten us fired. Yeah, we were on a uh, runaway train. We just yeah. were out of control. We know that. Mm -hmm. And if we uh, survived somehow the Sex for Sam thing, then we would have had to top the Sex for Sam thing. Yeah, we were on a can you top this train ride. Uh, that uh, th th There was no winning. We were doing a can you top this type of radio show mm -hmm. for three or four years straight. It yeah. started with a little thing, and then the next thing was a little bigger, and then we got the C word on live TV, then the voyeur bust, then yeah. it was just out of control. So every time we made the news, it had to be bigger than the last time. And yeah. I don't see where we were going to just sit down one day in a back room and go, all right, guys, enough with this out of control type of radio. Yeah, We've taken as far as we can. We just uh, Our mentality back then was, all right, what can we do next? Yeah, What can we do next to get our names out there and and just uh, shock people and uh, make make people cringe, you know. Yeah. I well, love hear... the show, boys, and I'm spreading the virus for you here in North Carolina. All Take right. care. Thank, Thank you, you, Brian. It made it made me a better comedian, as corny as that is, too, because it forced me just to do material. I did Tough Crowd for two years, which forced mm -hmm. me to write. I mean, it was just no choice. I mean, that's what you do when you're off and you're ready to shoot yourself. Yeah. You know, you just, yeah. I mean, so in, in hindsight, it worked out, but in the time, it was the worst thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. All right. Thank you for listening to the Opie and Anthony program on XM Satellite Radio as we... We uh, rebuild our radio careers. You're listening yes. to the pioneers of satellite radio. Ooh, ooh. So I guess maybe it was the best thing that ever happened to us. I don't know. Hey. Taking a look back today. It was three years ago today that we did our Sex with Sam thing. That turned out to be an international story, by the way. It yes. Was, it was uh, all over the world. Reported all over the world in many, many different language uh, newspapers. Yeah. Uh, hey, would you blow me, of course, from uh, Melbourne, uh, Florida. That's not his real name, Anthony. Of course it's not, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, he says, you should have had the psychic on three years ago. <laughs> That's very funny, sir. Uh, you ass. <laughs> Rub it in. <laughs> yeah, sure. Very good. Let's say hi to John in Utah. John, what's up? Yeah, the, you're, you guys getting uh, fired back actually was the best thing that happened to you. I was... Uh, a Seattle boy before I moved uh, down to Utah, and uh, I would have never heard of you guys if you hadn't gotten on XM. And you guys are awesome. Oh, thank, thank you, my you. friend. Thank you, sir. And I like toast. All right, you like he's toast. He's the likes toast guy. 